there's some really good thought going around uh, at the moment, a kind of morphic resonance of uh, thought that's been <coughs> contained in talks and podcasts around this reclamation or this return to the origin stories, return to the divine, return to myth. And I want to weigh in here um, with, uh, I guess, my arrival at what I'm calling the Church of Mother Country. I'm aware that there are a lot of men speaking into this space, John Pagao and Jonathan Pagao and John Viveki and Paul Kingsnorth and Martin Shaw. Um, but I, I want to bring the feminine into this space. And while I am finding the, the, uh, the nourishment from those men and many others, Eisenstein um, and, and Janka Porter too, uh, in Sand Talk, he, he talks about reclamation. And this is all, I guess, coming from this moment of stepping into the next technological rupture. Um, and there's a, a lot of beat up about that. Um, so I, I want to sort of resist the discussion around AI and return to um, mother country. And for those of you outside Australia, country is a term Aboriginal people use to talk about not just the earth, but the totality of what uh, the earth holds the possibilities of the, the story, the language, the culture of country. And so, um, yeah, so uh, mother country as a expression is, has been gifted by Aboriginal friends of mine. And I've really felt into that and I feel the the warmth of that. I feel more connected to that here in this country than, say, M Mother Earth. Um, yeah, so what I'm calling the Church of Mother Country has mer many origin places for me. I, I was raised Christian and then went to university and became secular and <clears throat> fell into the God delusion era and then came out of it with the science delusion of uh, Sheldrake um, and but more than that more than the bookishness or the uh, reportage from uh, in the internet um, it's really the cold water and the barefoot uh, humility practices that uh, Meg and I have been doing um, have really deepened uh, connection to country and I think there's something um, about humility that's really calling uh, me at the moment and looking at the hubris of technocultish society or what I call hyper techno civility. Um, this kind of uh, making God civilization. And the origin, I guess, of, uh, yeah, the origin place for me is is the entwined myth of Pandora, Epimetheus and Prometheus and I've spoken about this before and I've written a book called Refermenting Culture which really sort of goes into this, um, uh, this myth but where I've arrived is just understanding that we are a Promethean only culture that we are sci and, and that's the, the religion of scientism um, because we've uh, subjugated Epimetheus, uh, Prometheus's twin brother, who is the god of the fault of forgetting. <clears throat> but I call um, Epimetheus the precautionary principle god, and the fool who forgets, who can have compassion um, in the forgetting. But also he is the warning to the Promethean total mastery, total technics way of existence. Epimetheus is the warning to his twin brother that with every technological rupture we forget, we, we embody a kind of amnesia uh, and we get further and further away from 
another country. Uh, from ecological processes, from the microbial, from the more than human. And so to re-perform the feminine, the, the sacred feminine, back into life, I feel is what is missing in a lot of the conversations in this beautiful returning to the origin story of, say, the Garden of Eden um, that Paul Kings North is bringing. Um, people like Martin Shaw are returning to a kind of uh, Christian orthodoxy, which is very exciting and it's very interesting. Um, but in Aboriginal country, it, it, that's only part of the picture for me as a second person, as a settler, as, as someone whose family on both my parents' sides have been in, um, in this country for several generations, um, first convicts uh, and settlers some of the first convicts and settlers. So uh, Mother Country really speaks to me and the church of Mother Country is not a Babel, uh, it's not a, a structure, it is a when people come together and stand or sit in circle and deeply listen, in, listen to one another we create a church uh, of the divine when we can listen and practice listening to country to the fire that may, we may be sitting around um, there is uh, the capacity for compassionate listening and deep listening and open hearted listening and this is uh, a part of the humility practice as well. And so Meg and I have uh, a part of many different listening circles, either with the children's forest school that we've initiated or the men's and women's circles, the um, various different celebrations throughout the year and the rites of passage uh, groups that we're involved with. So this uh, is a culmination, a slow step-by-step -step, uh, forging and stepping into the unknown, um, the un uncertainty of... Uh, and then just re re recently just arriving at, well, this is a kind of church. This is the church uh, that is the origin story, that is this um, placing Prometheus in a much more... Um, uh, uh, mitigated or reduced um, role where technology is just part of our human story. It's not the dominant drive. Uh, it's not the dominant force. So P Pandora is first mother. And so this is this sort of falling deeper into Jarrah mother country here, this, this country that I'm sitting in aptly in an old mine, in an old bluestone mine right now with um, that has been used as a rubbish tip um, and our goats and sheep, it's a common so our goats and sheep have been cleaning it up we, we don't have any farmland but we've been stealth farming um, in unwanted marginal land for a number of years now and getting a social license from neighbours to do that uh, because of the reduction of the fire risk. Um, our animals are eating away or reducing the fire risk and they're reducing the weed species. And so there's a kind of um, acceptance and a turning of, the blind, uh, uh, a turning of blind eye from the authorities uh, that um, we can have a small number of animals here and uh, not, uh, and they be part of the um, reclamation of this land and the uh, the cleanup of it as well. So yeah, so it's you know that this uh, this old mine site, which is then became a tip site, is now a site of renewal and reclamation um, of barefoot farming, of kinship and connection with uh, with animals that we love and we eat, that we have a relationship to, that we take the lives of. And this de 
industrializing as a part of a, a, a reclamation of um, the sacred. So Pandora is the goddess of fermentation and she holds up death um, in, a, in a delicious performance of um, winemaking and uh, any kind of ferment of sauerkraut and uh, pickles, um, lacto-fermented pickles. She is the uh, bridge between the underworld and and life on Earth in Mother Country. She is a goddess of the underworld, as she is the first mother. And the erasure uh, or the subjugation of her story to a box rather than a fermenting vessel, which is um, in uh, more maternalistic or in in a more maternal Greece, uh, it, it was Pandora's vessel, the fermentation jar which had the wine so that when the three days of grieving and connecting to the dead through a kind of drunken euphoria uh, to connect with loved ancestors, to connect with loved ones who had passed, to connect with the underworld, um, to subjugate her story to a box. Um, uh, is like a, a, just a part of the misogynist tendency um, that came from Hesiod and grew into Greek thought, into paternalistic green Greek thought, which then drove um, the classical period and into the Enlightenment. Um, this gender lopsidedness always running through monotheism and scientism. And so to reinstate Pandora, to reclaim her as a first mother from a Western sense, but to deepen that into place and to understand that Pandora in, in an Aboriginal context is mother country. And that this is just my interpretation. This is not building a dogma or a, a liturgy around uh, or a... Um, yeah, a, a, a theology around um, the Church of Mother Country. I'm using this language to um, to kind of explain another way of reclaiming um, the divine. And so I'm really inspired by people like Kings North who uh, re keep returning, and John Pagal keep returning to Jonathan Pagal returning to uh, humility and this is the first winter I, I, uh, I am usually barefoot for about seven months of the year but this is the first winter that I'm going barefoot every day and it's radically changing the way that I am being in the world the way that I'm moving and being present to and building and chopping firewood and climbing on old rusty roofs to fix, to patch um, shelter for the, for the animals. I'm, you know, uh, moving through bramble infested territory and my feet are becoming leather soles unto themselves. And the coldness is a kind of divinity. I'm warm and self-loving and, and comfortable up here, but my feet are constantly cold. And actually, I'm just looking down and seeing uh, blood from probably uh, blackberries. And there is this sort of, um, what I'm noticing in this sort of self-care and also, uh, I guess, stoicism, um, or stoicism's not right. Um, uh, it's, it's more just constantly keeping connected. Um, there are negative ions that come from mother country that interact with our positive ions being our bodies. And even the what is now being observed as the anti-inflammation properties of that. So if the body isn't inflamed, it, it is more present. It is more uh, 
there is more possibility for love and connection and deep listening. If we are sick and we're inflamed with the industrial food and industrial medicine and our shoes are always rubberized um, and, and stopping the earthing um, between the earth, between the mother and ourselves, then we're constantly in a state of disconnection. So there is this whole sort of body thought, feeling, um, uh, generating that's been coming for all my adult life, really, all my all my life, really, because my re reclamation of um, my origin story is back to my childhood along the Mittagong Creek. Um, where I was allowed to be covered in mud and collecting wild food in terms of yabbies and blackberries and honeysuckle nectar and um, so you know in many ways my connection to permaculture and then the sacred um, is, a, is a return to that, that childhood um, joy of deep connection of barefoot um, microbial earth connection to country. Um, Pandora, I call my gut, which is our first brain. Um, before we were human in form, we were a gut, an ass, and a mouth. Um, and our gut is non-human <clears throat> or more than human consciousness we are you know, our gut is basically a, a logic center that is much more than human so the connection between our pandorian fermenting vessel of our gut and mother country is really uh ancient um and then our hearts of what i call my epimetean love center the the fool who can can love the fool who forgot but who can love? And then my Promethean mind center. Um, the, 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 the Prometheus in my thinking has been foregrounded by industrial schooling. And so the, in order to, um, to be thinking in my three logic centers, compassion, mastery or memory or uh, philosophy or um, techniques or tool making and then intuition uh, connection um, fermentation the possibility of uh, bridging worlds transforming from one substance to another to make more life possible so Pandora logic Epimetheus logic and Promethean logic um, are the three logic centers that I've needed to be in relationship with, uh, to speak through, in order to return to the sacred. This is the secular world, this is the materialist scientist, scientism world uh, that is ruining our, um, our, our world, the worlds of the world that is destroying through the hubris of this only. And so the church, so arriving, so arriving at the church of mother country is a, an arrival um, into the three logic centers and to in order to, to be able to do that, it's not a thinking process, but an embodiment process and a heart feeling process to be vulnerable, to be in environments. The sheep are munching at my basket right now. Um, to, be, to be vulnerable, to, to, to be in uh, congregations of friends and community where one can be vulnerable so that this logic center can grow 
and to be in deep connection uh, to the mother in an embodied microbial fermenting sense is the fermentation that's going on in my feet right now between the microbes of this biome and me as a as a biome and so the fermenta fermentation process is happening by being barefoot or by slipping into cold water and shocking the body every morning as we do for five minutes into total presence total connection total presence to discomfort um, and this relationship with suffering and joy or grief and praise that Martin Prechtel um, speaks to so beautifully um, is another part of this that there had to have been a very big grief story in my life several years ago for me to have fallen deeper in towards this arriving at the Church of Mother Country without grief and without openness to grief and without deep suffering um, and uh, honoring suffering in our lives by making space for it by making community that uh, enables us and witnesses us in our suffering and this is the men's and women's circles that we've been holding um, for a number of years now so these are just some rambling um, thoughts uh, on a very wet morning in Jarrah mother country and I hope it is of interest and that um, maybe one day I'll uh, write this down in a more coherent way. But at the moment it feels really um, good just to be speaking from, from Mother Country, to be speaking as a connected biome to the larger biome of Mother Country and to be really leaning in to reclamation of origin story of here, ancestral stories of here, as much as my Epimethean and Promethean and Pandorian myth, illogical and Garden of Eden origin stories. I'm sitting under a massive um, apple tree and um, I'm, I've been fasting and I'm going to break my fast with this apple. And that massive apple tree grew out of the mining um, out of the wasteland that this uh, environment, this biome was uh, maybe a hundred years ago. So this big old apple sits uh, and gets occasionally pruned, it gets now fed by the, the sheep and goats here and it continues to uh, create a habitat and food source for humans and more than, more than humans. So I'm going to go and break my fast and um, yeah, I hope this has been of interest and your comments and your connections to this, uh, this piece uh, uh, is of course highly, highly welcome. Thanks for listening.